It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. The, the game designer's dad wrote to me saying that I, I, I messed up two things. It's good we stopped when we did last time. Um, these three legions that remember, if you were if you watched the last one, and if you didn't, you should just watch the last one because otherwise you're not going to know what's going on. Uh, you might not anyway, but um, they were over here. They're not supposed to go over here. They're supposed to go over here. Or I could put them in one of these, but I think they're going to go here just to kind of be with their buddies instead of um, with those other people. Um, also, for Sinjurix, um doesn't have to go on the map, doesn't have to go there either. Could go here. He could go on any time now. He doesn't have to go right away. Not, Mooney does not want to put him there right now. Look at look at Caesar right next door. Could just come in and destroy him. And if oh, if your leader gets killed, you lose some capabilities. Um, the the main difference between the leader being up and the leader being just some ancestor is that the leader being up gets a greater range, and they also get some other little perks and bonuses depending on who that leader is. So Mooney could put Versinturance over here right now, but why put him on the map at all? You can just put him down when he wants to use him. So that's a nice little bit of added security. Um, and also a lesson to us all to read the rules a little more carefully. I, I oftentimes just kind of skim things and kind of get the gist and then just start playing because that's more fun and that you know strikes my pleasure motive. Um, but you know, if you were in Mooney's shoes, your pleasure motive would be even more triggered if you are able to keep your beloved Versintrux safe. See that red block there? It's a fort, and this fort has a name. The name is... Adwatica. And it's in the wrong spot. I put it in the wrong spot. It's supposed to be over here by Aburonis. Um But it probably... We probably... Re, re, um, refixed our mistake too soon because Pegasus is about to take that thing down. I, I believe. I believe that's what she's going to do. Um, there's this nice event here which will let her get rid of this annoying fort. Um, the fort's a problem because it, it really protects the Romans if they were to march in and uh, try to assault and be a Rex or do something there. Uh, and she would like it gone. It also... She's not able to use her German horses, if you recall from last time. Uh, her ecology skill has helped her uh, uh, tame these horses and use them to her advantage, but they, they're useless against a fort. So, further, it's, it's nice if she can get a hold of the Germans. Otherwise, they could, um, you know, if, they're, if they remain here, oh, the event's going to allow her to march them in. I should explain that. If they remain here, they can... Um, you know, next next winter, just kind of come in and start messing with her. But if she can kind of, you know, divert them through a future action towards where the Romans are, or hopefully maybe the Romans are gone, or just somewhere else, kind of control where they are, that can be helpful. Um, but right now, the Germans are going to be ambushing this fort. Now, especially nice in this event, because normally it would take four Germans to cause one loss. But in this case, it's only going to cause take two. So that means she's going to get three attempts to get rid of that fort, um, which is useful because Tater isn't hot, has this ballast day, which makes it harder to get rid of a fort. So she's going to get three tries on this D6 to get rid of that fort. <laughs> Done! She only needed one try. Goodbye, Aduatica. You stood bravely, but for too short a time. Shed only a single tear, for Aduatica has come back. Just a little bit south of where it once stood, Tater, as in Tot, has placed another fortress, or Aduatica, right here. And that's great for her. Uh, what's great for Dick is that he's spreading out even further. Look at this swath of blue. I mean, it's kind of incumbent on Mooney to deal with that. Or it might be a very short game indeed. Dick is Dick is at uh, he is above his um, victory requirement. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So he's you know if the game were to end right now, Dick would totally be the winner. Here comes Versinchurix, ready to use his superpower. He's uh, it's kind of a season of putting down forts, and here comes another one, right here. This one 
doesn't really need a name because it's got a name right there. You can see it for yourself. And there we go. There's the name of the fort. And that's not really his superpower, though. His superpower is that he gets to put down a fort and put down some war bands. And I think it's going to be even one more. Look at all that. Look at this horde. That's impressive. I would be scared to face all of that. We saw the Romans march from Provincia into Arveni, Arveni and uh, take control there. Uh, instead of uh, going back north with the majority of her forces, she decided to kind of split them. Because um, she's got, you know, she could probably hold this. It it's, it'd be scary for someone to want to come in there, especially with their leader, uh, because she would probably get to counterattack first. Um, she also marched into Britannia, took control there, but then Pegasus, with her limited command, sent both of her war bands from here over here to counter her command. She wants, she's, she has a love of the ocean. She wanted to, to sail, and she wants to just take that right away. Um, those were kind of her governing principles and deciding to do that. And she thinks maybe if she makes this kind of a tempting target uh, for, for these fellows to try to come in with uh, Tater's forces, she could maybe like then counter-strike this way. So it could, you know, we'll see what happens with that. Mooney just did a really special and expensive maneuver. It was called Radiant Sea Blast. And what it dealt was is he radiated his people out and then um, subverted, I forgot to do this one, subverted members of other people's people to his people. Um, so that's why you have this kind of like radiating explosion of green. So um, kind of how that works, in case you don't know the game. I don't, I kind of like him half teaching, but really not. So I don't know if that's helpful, but it was like this. He, he marched in there and was like, hey, you want to be on our team? And he's like, you're right, I do. And so now they're on his team and He's got a much bigger team, uh, but not very much money, so he's got to watch out for that. How is uh, Dick going to respond to that? Well, Dick's got a nice event here uh, called Hill Forts, and that's going to let him put some stuff down, and he'll go ahead and do that. Um, so he can put, let's see the, the process. Ah, okay, so he's. The, you have to put the allies down. I was wondering why it was worded this way. You have to put allies down first and then you can replace them with citadels. So he doesn't have any allies to put down, though he could move one from elsewhere. And I think he'll do that because this is actually going to be kind of hard to hold on to. So he'll put that there. Um, and then he can replace any, any of these three allies, four allies with cities or with citadels. I think he'd probably like to put a citadel here. He's going to put them in the juicier spots and also here. By juicier, I mean they have more spaces, and also they're more on the frontiers, so they might be more likely to be assaulted. Yeah, there's more tribes there to protect. I really love this event, Impetuosity. What it does is it, it lets you march into a region, and, and then whoever, <laughs> if you march into a region, if there are Veni or Belge there, they attack you. Um, and it's like, why would you want that to happen? Well, I think the reason you would want it to happen, I haven't been able to be in a situation where this was useful, is that then you get to attack back. So if you were to march, say, into here, and you wanted to take out these guys, you could do that. You could move and then attack essentially one turn. It's just at the cost of, you know, you get you take your losses first. Um, Pegasus didn't decide to do that or the other one, which is free march, one group, blah, blah, blah. Then they battle. Thought about it. Um, yeah, it, it's just if the fort made it kind of unattractive. So instead she moved the Germans in here and cemented um, Britannia into her control. Now the Romans are probably going to pass. They don't want to use the impetuosity right now. And they're going to do some attacking on the next card, which is Ambecti. Tater, by way of command, no special activity, is going to battle here and here. Now this one's pretty easy. I've already flipped these up for the battle. Um, she's going to wipe out the Arvani in this, in this their home region. Which is kind of sad, but it's something that happens sometimes. Doesn't mean they can't come back, it just means they're gone briefly. Could be like they went to the store, but it's not like that at all. Um, 
But up here, what's she going to do? Is she going to take out the Germans or the Arvani? Because she can only attack one faction, right? At least as far as I know. Um, now, you might think she'd want to go after the Arvani because they can more often cause problems. But the Germans can actually attack her, um, whereas the Arvani don't have the numbers. But that said, the Arvani being there could continually like pick off her auxilia until she has nothing left. And then that, that could cause that cause her a problem later on. I think she will go ahead and get rid of the Arvani there. Um, so, yeah, because they could continually sap off Auxilia while adding more people, whereas the Germans could just get rid of one Auxilia, probably just once. Um, so these are going to flip up, and that'll be it. I'd forgotten to, to mention and to do actually that uh, Tater wanted to attack here too. She left two auxilia behind. She explained to Dick that Provincia is hers. He can't be built uh, uh, allying with the Hell V there. Um, and we'll have to see how he feels about that. He thought they were really good friends, but he knows how the world works. He's a hard boiled private detective who's used to all sorts of types of people and having to deal with all sorts of situations, um, social dynamics, things like that. So here's just another on his list of stuff to deal with. After suffering a small raid at the hands of Mooney, uh, Dick further spread out across the, well, getting more allies and things, did some suborn here to get rid of the Arvani that were there, and is really strengthening his position. It might get to be that Tater is going to have to turn on him in order to keep him from winning. Right now, let's see, he is, he's at seven, and the next, he, he, uh, his victory condition is comparative relative to someone else. The next person with the most is six. And that's the Belgique. And no one's really in a place to get rid of any of his stuff right now. And he's in a place to even build further here in uh, the Pictones region. Mooney's finally getting his capability more to just kind of feel at, as, as an equal with the other players who went to college and had work experience. Then because he definitely loves it, though it is going to help him, probably, maybe, we'll see. Um, it, it helps him if he has a massive Arvani, which he does not have a sufficient mass to even use his capability at this point. Uh, following that, Tater uh, dispersed all the tribes in Mooney's homeland, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, and also got some money other places. This did allow the Belgier to uh, do some free rallying, which was... Pretty nice for um, Pegasus there. What, how it works is if they do the thing where they get some money, and they uh, did get some money there before placing this down, Tater did. Um, they get to roll, and if they get one, two, or three, they get to free rally in adjacent regions. Same, same with Arvani, but the Arvani did not roll so well. So no consolation prize for Mooney other than his mass Gaelic archers. The gods are looking at Dick and they are smiling. Although he has a ways to go, he's still at his victory condition, um, which is great. We all know that's great, how great it feels to be a winner. Um, but so really, all he, need, all he really needs to do is defend himself and stall. So if he can keep you know, people from acting, that's great. And he just has a perfect set of cards to keep people from acting. He has the Celtic Rites, which... You know, with one of the the operation or the events, he can make it so that um, uh, the Arveni and the Belger are unable to act for these two cards, which is pretty great. And they would also lose money, which would make it harder for them to act in the future, which is also great. But really what he's worried about is, is Tater snapping at him. She's already shown that she will do that. Um, she said it was only going to be just there, but, you know, if he's about to win and she's so far negative, um, we, we should probably check the board here soon to see with their current score what would happen to them. But she's so far negative, it would be really likely that she would be out of the game. Well, let's just look right now. What's Tater at? Negative 300. So if she's at, um, she's at negative uh, six right now, looks like. So she would just be barely be holding on. Um, at, it would put her at negative 600 if she lost at this point. Um, so remember, negative 700, you're out of the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament. So his other option 
is to execute free command in multiple regions, which is excellent. He could just rally and then also stay eligible. And what? He's first in the next card. So all he's going to do is he's going to allow the Belger to have a, a command plus special activity, which they're not much of a threat to him right now. So why not just do that, Dick, and quit talking about it? Okay, so let's do the event. We'll go ahead and rally and... You know, these, these videos get really long. And look, he's even further along now. Jeez, this is insane. Can you believe this? But I'm just, I'm talking so much that the, the video is just going to be really, really long. I could stop it right now. You wouldn't have to watch me put these pieces out. But you do have to watch me because I, I just keep talking and the video is going to be really long. With Dick chasing almost all of Mooney's forces out of his... Um, his regions, it's time to talk Tater because she has got some real deep soul searching to do right now. Um, Tater is a sensitive person, at least that's how she describes herself. She's also the reincarnation of a 600 year old tribal person. So she can definitely feel for the Adui who have reached out to her and um, kind of befriended her and welcomed her to their lands. Um, but at the same time, what's she going to do this turn? You know, if she keeps uh, prosecuting war against the Belger, she hasn't really been doing that too much. But if she does that further, that just makes it easier for Dick to end the game. And she doesn't want the game to end on, not in these terms. She, there's still so much more she wants to do in Gaul before this is over. And so she could go against the Arvini, but she'd have to go right into here. She'd probably do okay against them. Um, but look how many cards have gone by. I guess there's a little bit of ways, but it would take a while to, for her to kind of knock the Adui back. So if she decides to do that at this point in the game, she's really going to have to concern herself with um, her supply line back to Provincia. And so what kind of route could she take? She's got... She's got enough to, to hold up her legions and stuff up there. Uh, she'll have the Germans continually harrying her. So she'll, they're they're going to have to be stuck on there as an island, and I think she'll have to just kind of tunnel through. Um, looks like this might be the easiest spot to go to. They're going to have a chance to counter-strike. She's only got a limited command right now. Um, yeah, and then she'll have this kind of like path going right this way. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. So she's going to go ahead and march right up here. That does put this in Adui control, though, because there's that little rascal. Mm. She doesn't want to leave anything behind. She's going to have to just do it. And, you know, if winter comes before she gets done with now, but then at the same time, this one's a lot more attractive. I think she's going to go this way, and it's not. I'm... One thing is, is I actually kind of th play worse when I'm doing this, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, Pegasus has a choice of either mobilizing in the Sweeby, Sweeby, uh, which would uh, do some German stuff, uh, which seems kind of like it would be an odd move right now. Her other choice would be to, to do a limited command and maybe come down here and start to get a little more control. That would actually put her pretty close to her victory condition, um, but she'd be kind of out in the wilderness with very little way of getting more forces into there. Uh, it wouldn't be hard for someone to counter her, but maybe with all the tumult with the Adui, she might be able to slip it in. She could also march into here, um, but I think she's thinking she's definitely going to need to get this region in order to win the game. I mean, this region is just so potent and part of her natural homeland that she needs to do that. And by um, doing this event, the Germans do some stuff, um, and they might they might uh, mess with the Adui down here, but they might also mess with her. So let's find it. Let's go through a quick German phase. Skipping rally is what we're going to do. So the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to march. Um, these ones are just going to march underground, which is kind of what she wants them to do. I'm not going to I'm not going to flip them all over because I just have to flip them back again because they're going to then ambush. Um, but these ones are going to march. Let's see. So they need to keep enough to keep control. That's that many. 
So one, two, three, they're going to go here. Four, five, six, they're going to go there. Okay. One, two, three. That's not what she wanted. That's going to be a pain. Then they're going to raid. Um, these ones aren't wouldn't aren't going to raid because there's a fort here, so the raid wouldn't do anything. Uh, these are going to raid two of them, and we'll do one, two, three. It's the Belger. Four, five, six. It's going to be the Arvani that get raided, and it's the Arvani. So they're going to lose a couple dollars. That's not not what she wanted to happen. Um, the Adui are also going to lose a dollar here. Boop. And then over here, these guys are going to ambush. So they were underground. Now they're back up again, and that's going to just take out an auxilia. You know, slowly kind of get rid of these guys so that she can put these legions in danger. And that would be nice. Tater, for her part, is going to have to pass up on this capability because she needs to be able to act before the Adui do, and she's fortunate that the cards are favoring her in that way. So she's going to do a command, no special activity, so she, they don't, uh, Dick doesn't get revenge and get a negative uh, event on her. That's going to take out two of those, and the Dick danger is no longer uh, in play right now. Dick isn't really in a, sh unless he does a suborn and places an ally there, Dick it really isn't going to be able to uh, end the game. Uh, and she's also going to get rid of these Germans, these pesky Germans. One, two, three, four. Only, it only costs four dollars to do all of that. What a bargain. Pegasus is making her move, a rather risky move, but a move nonetheless. And, you know, it might really pay off. Look what she did. She put all her forces down here. Uh, she thought about moving these fellows over, but she is kind of low on money, and she wants to be able to do stuff in the future in order to, like, do more with her move. She's figuring the, the Romans don't aren't going to want to get too far from home right now. If they go north and try to stop her in, um, in Artrobates, Atrobates, Atrobots, Atrobates. Um, then they're, thanks to their, their falling out with the Adui, they're going to be really cut off from home and probably lose a lot of legions. Um, so it's going to be probably incumbent on, in, in Pegasus' mind, someone else to try and stop her. Uh, and that might be the Adui over here, because uh, she also sent her forces from Britannia down to take control of this region. So that put her in her victory condition. Um, really, she would really just like to take this back, but if she figures if she gets some things other places too, uh, that can really, really help. And that brings us to winter, so pretty good timing for Pegasus. She doesn't necessarily have it now, though. So here's what's, here's what's going on. Both the Edui and the Romans are going to be able to act on this card, Dick and Tater, respectively. Uh, Tater can, can assault. Is it called assault? No, it's called battle. That would get rid of six of these fellows, which would give her control, which would take the Belgique down three. That she can do. Um, she could also use the event and get rid of a couple of allies of, of Dick's right there, plying them with wine, if Dick lets her. Now, Dick, for his part, he could take the event for some reason, or he could do a command plus special activity and go ahead and place an ally right there, which would give, um, which would definitely end the game, I'm pretty sure, because then he's at his victory condition, and so is Pegasus, and then Tater would have to decide which one of them doesn't win, right? Or she could decide to do something else entirely, but I think she would, she would probably assault Dick because that would improve her own victory condition. You see what I'm saying? So how that would map out is Dick would choose the command plus special activity, suborn to place an ally there, which would put him over the top. Special activity, what else could he do? There's not, or command, there's not really much that would do anything. Um, and then, and then Tater 
would have to decide whether or not to use the, the Roman wine to get rid of these allies, which she probably would. So Dick can kind of assume that that's what she would do because everyone's trying to get their points the best they can. And if she gets rid of, if she hurts Dick in favor of Pegasus, then that, that improves her a lot. I think I'm just kind of repeating myself, but I'm trying to explain. Um, or she could attack the Belgique here and, and take, that, take Pegasus down three. And that would that would be handing the victory to to Dick, but she's not going to do that. So um, so what Dick's kind of, Dick's calculation then has to be: uh, is it in his interest to end the game now? Rome is against him. He's doing pretty well. Is he going to be able to do better than this point in time? Uh, because he's he, so he would end the game with maybe like a negative fifty, which is not that bad. Dick on the chart is at negative 260, so that would put him at negative 310. He's still very much in the game. Um, and also it would, you know, hurt it, two of his competitors quite a bit, really, which is like a net positive for the other people in here. Um, or does he want to try for the outright victory? So here's where we really have to dig deep into Dick. He's a private investigator. He likes Cool Whip and... Uh, Stab twice, rappers and press. You like to meet God. Carpe diem. Hmm. Absent, tall, sensitive, sexy. It's not helping me too much. I think. Hmm. I think, given the situation, given that Rome is against him, although. Rome, if things end right now, is going to be pretty, like, possibly be pretty hurt thanks to a loss of legions. But they'll get more legions back, I think. I have to do some counting. I'm going to, I'm going to shut off the camera and come back to you because otherwise I, I'm going to go on for a while here thinking about this. Ultimately, I think what I was struggling with was my own desire to continue playing the game. Uh, but really, it wasn't what was best for Dick for him to keep going. I think he. He did well enough, um, and it seemed like things were going to start to turn against him. Uh, he kind of, it was like he, his, the wave went up, and it was starting to go down, and he saw a way out, so he took it. Could have gone back up again. We don't know, and we're not going to know, because he decided to cut the cord right there. Now let's look at our results. Um, Pegasus won, so she got a bonus 50 points, so she's down to just negative 220 now. Um, who else do who else was playing Franz? Uh, Dick. Oh, I didn't I didn't do his. Okay, so he lost a hundred points. So you know he's still kind of treading water in the middle there. Uh, Tater down to negative five hundred now. That's she's she's really close. If she loses another game, probably she's going to be out. Mooney just barely held on at negative 668. So let's just take a look at the board state at the end here. You can see how things are looking. Um, Mooney really was just kind of building up in here. He Part of it was, you know, he was getting a lot of limited commands there at the end when he was maybe ready to start moving. Um, and, you know, the game, this game went really short, really, really short. Uh, largely because of that that meta structure that I mentioned last video. Um, yeah, things that was really a surprise, Pegasus picking it up there at the end, um, and it could have gone very differently. Uh, yeah, could have gone very, very differently. So sad that this I have to put this away, but you know you got to do what's best for the tournament now, don't we, fellas? Don't we? I'm glad ever, I, I'm glad we didn't have to put any of you away. Right? And I'll be glad to see you next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I have no idea what I'm going to be playing. How fun!